Oshkosh 2023 here at the ultralight field, the famous ultralight field where all the uh, light sport aircraft are usually found. And debuting this year is a company that you probably haven't heard of before, and that's Kit Planes for Africa. So I'm going to have uh, Stefan here introduce himself, and we're going to talk aircraft. Hi, I'm uh, Stefan. My surname is Kutsia, and I'm the owner co-owner of Kit Planes for Africa. We're actually three owners. I own the major share of the company. And uh, we've been uh, manufacturing these wonderful aircraft since 1993. Very long time. So what, what took you so long to bring this to the States? That is a very good question. <laughs> yeah. You're asking yourself that very question today. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, we knew that if we start penetrating the U.S. market, we... Um, you know, we might not be able to supply, and I didn't want to run in a, in a position where we could not supply uh, the market. So it's very bad when you order something and you cannot get it. So we've been uh, positioning ourselves in the market uh, for the last probably eight years. Uh, we first did Europe, Australia, the UK, and we also bought the airfield where the factory is uh, located in Johannesburg. And um, we've expanded our facility in order to be able to accommodate the U.S. market. So we are now ready. Okay, Brian, so this aircraft behind me is the Explorer. Um, this, this aircraft is a certified German production-built aircraft. So it falls under the UL uh, 600 category in Germany. Um, <clears throat> but the rest of Europe has adopted, or most of Europe have adopted uh, this. So we sell these aircraft as fully, fully built, production built aircraft from South Africa, shipping them to Germany. Um, they get registered and everything, test flown and so on. Um, this specific model is a 600 kilogram model and we keep it in this category. The, the airframe can handle more, but we keep it in the 600 kilogram category because we have other aircraft that will fill the higher load categories. So this model is available uh, um, with uh, up to a 135 horsepower KFA turbo engine. Um, the standard avionics are MGL if you buy a factory flyaway aircraft. It's available in kit and in production form depending on the country. So in the US we haven't uh, gone through the SLSA process yet but we are planning to do that. Um, we were just waiting a little bit to see what Mosaic is going to do and offer uh, to the segment. Yeah, and then, uh, as I said, the wings can fold on this one, so you can trailer it. Uh, it's easy storage for winter storage and so on. Uh, we have some basic uh, uh, kits available for the fire forward. Jabiru, UL Power, Subaru, uh, the Aero V, Aero Momentum. There's a lot of options available, and then obviously the standard Rotex and so on. Um, and then KFA also builds a range of uh, Rotex-based turbocharged engines. Yeah, originally um, the company started producing the Bush Baby, it was called the Bush Wagon in 1993 and then during certification they renamed it the Bush Baby um, and from there the models evolved um, into the Explorer which is uh, our LSA model currently. Um, it is certified in Germany as a production build aircraft so we can sell them in Europe, Australia, South Africa um, as production build and then we are busy with the UK at the moment for the 600 kilogram class. And then lastly we have the Safari, um, we have two official models on the market at the moment which is the Safari XL, uh, which you see behind me. Uh, this one is made for the big boys. Um, then we have the normal Safari Mark III, uh, which is just a little bit smaller and it was uh, certified in, in some countries and that's why we had to keep the configuration. So this new model will be available for the North American market basically only. Um, We've done the testing and everything to 1,650 pounds and we're looking forward to the mosaic where <laughs> it will open up other opportunities for us. Okay, so starting with your base model, working through, uh, what are the, the engine choices for the different models? Our preferred engine choices. Okay, yeah, we, we, I mean, we've been in the market for, we're running on our 31st year now. Um, so people have been installing anything that can take an aeroplane up in the air. Uh, but our preferred engines are Rotax. Um, I'm currently testing the 916. Um, but most of the engines are the KFA produced Rotax versions where we modify the engine slightly to produce, uh, we add a turbo and it produces uh, slightly more horsepower for our high altitudes. Um, and then obviously in the normal uh, Rotax range from a 912 80 horsepower up to the 916. 
Right, what you see behind me is a fuselage of a safari. Um, this one was quick built for Vince, um, uh, our dis uh, North American distributor. Um, we've done a stage one quick build, so we have different quick builds on this uh, frame. Uh, stage one is 51% compliant. Actually, stage one and a half is what we called it. It's still 51% compliant, where we build the wings for you. Um, there's there's some rigging done. Uh, the controls are installed. So. Just talking about the controls, let's come back to that. Uh, all the con major controls are push-pull. So as I said, uh, we have push-pull tubes um, for all our controls except for the rudder, which is a cable. Um, the construction, as I pointed out before, is uh, tubular steel. They are different sizes. Some of these uh, sizes you cannot buy off the shelf. They are made for us. Um, we get production uh, test certificates with the steel and so on to ensure consistent quality. The frame is tick welded, um, takes about two weeks to complete the, the welding of the airframe and um, we have two guys working on that at a time. The, all the parts in the kit are CNC cut, they are laser cut and pre-bent so there's no construction for the actual builder. Build times vary, um, if you have two left hands it will take you approximately 800 hours to complete the build for a first time builder. Um, experienced builders have, uh, they, they reported build times of 520 hours, somewhere around there. At the factory we normally take about 380 hours to build a, an aircraft up to flying status. Um, so what you see behind me is the Safari XL as I said with uh, Rotex 915. Um, this is an FP propeller which these guys next door have built specifically for floats. So this propeller has got a reverse function, electrically reverse for the 915. Um, And uh, yeah, it's, it seems to be working very well. We, we're still testing it. They bench tested it to 2,000 hours and there was no problems, or were no problems. Um, yeah, as I said, the Safari is a very large aircraft. Um, it's not, I don't think there's anything in the market segment. The width of the cockpit is the same as a 182. Um, you have enough headroom, so the typical headset bumping the roof um, in these type of aeroplanes is eliminated. We have a very large luggage compartment in the back that can take approximately 130 pounds or, or 60 kilograms of luggage. Uh, it all depends on your CG. So we have an external door which you can open. So it's a bit of a mess with the wires, but it gives you the idea. There's lots of space. And in here, Vince has added some uh, fishing rod holders. So the rod holders actually go down to the back here. And um, it actually makes quite a handy feature. I mean, it's easy to access your luggage. Um, then in terms of avionics, this one is, uh, it's got everything that you can think of. <laughs> this is probably a full IF panel. Um, so you can, you, you can have your choice from uh, basic analog steam gauges, like we call them. Uh, to very sophisticated EFA systems. So we've discussed the airframe and the different models there, the engine uh, of choice. Uh, one thing I want to discuss right now to differentiate you, this looks very much like a Just Aircraft or a Kit Fox. You've been around for a very long time. You want to explain the differences from your, uh, I'll say your competitors, but... No, I get that comment quite a lot that it's a copy of a Kit Fox. It's not. I invite anybody with a Kit Fox to come and have a look. And you'll see um, maybe the origins of the uh, Bush Baby might have been in a, in a hybrid between an Avid and a Kit Fox 2, if I remember correctly. I, I wasn't involved in the company at that stage. But that's where the similarities end. I mean, once we started with certification, um, you know, these things evolved. Um, so it's completely different. Our wing profile is slightly different. I know the wing fits a Kit Fox because we had a couple of guys that needed wings for a Kit Fox and they, they bought some of our wings so I know you can modify it to fit. Um, yeah, that's basically where it ends. The Explorer, which I heard is approximately the same dimensions as a Kit Fox, uh, but the Safari is much larger. It's a 1650 uh, aeroplane, so in kilograms, 750 kilograms. Uh, it's much wider, longer. 
it's got an uh, external baggage compartment so we can load about 60 kilograms of uh, luggage so what's that in pounds 130 pounds about we are partnering with great companies like dynon avionics at dynon.com airtech coatings at airtechcoatings.com clemens insurance at clemensinsurance.net south mississippi light aircraft at flysmla.com foxtrot 95 calhoun county airport at flyfoxtrot95.com edge performance at edgeperformance.no Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. It's a much larger aircraft and um, we, we We've positioned ourselves in the market as a stall aircraft, but not a super stall aircraft. So if you compare it to just aircraft, uh, Steve Henry there, um, it's not in the same category. They, uh, we, we in the stall category, so we still take off quite short. Um, you know, with a, with a 915, which I can give you now uh, comparable numbers, of the 1650 aircraft at 7,000 foot density altitudes, we still take off in 150 foot or less. So it is a stall aircraft, but not a super stall aircraft. And um, so yeah, we, we, we also positioned ourselves in the cruising range a little bit higher. So with the 915, you can cruise comfortably at 95 knots. With the 916, I've now seen that we can easily go up to 105 knots. Um, so it can go places. That's so, so give us both ends of the spectrum. What, what is the, uh, the stall speed and then what is the V&E? Okay, so VNE is 126 knots. We've, we've just capped it there. Um, there's no point in going over that. Um, the stall speed on the standard wing, we have two wings, forgot to mention that. Uh, the standard wing is 38 knots, the official full flap stall limit, uh, stall speed. Uh, no flaps, 42 knots. Um, then on the STL wing, it's 28 knots, uh, full flap, and 31 knots, no flap. And it doesn't really stall, it's just mushing down. Um, and the STL wing is a little bit faster, believe it or not, uh, because at higher altitudes, it tends to have a, a shallower angle of attack um, because of the extra lift. We, the cord is longer, um, it's got a thicker, it's a thicker wing profile. Um, we've also fixed the leading edges to be consistent. Um, uh, if you look at uh, most of these type of aircraft wings, the leading edges um, are not um, consistent because even if you install a cuff on the front, the cuff can be moved slightly forward and backwards by the builder. So they can change the profile slightly without the intention of moving anything. Um, so we find that between two exactly the same models, you'll have a knot or two different uh, stall speeds and it's just because of the construction of the wing. So we've fixed that problem by long time ago by adding um, the leading edges that are co uh, composite, so they're more consistent. And now with the STL wing, the leading edge is actually part of the rope. So it's consistently the same for all builders. So since you're, you're talking kind of construction anyway, uh, let's discuss what is this made of? Is it typical uh, steel and uh, wood ribs or you know, walk us through that? Yeah, it's a typical construction for a bush plane. So it's a tubular steel construction. The steel we use is 1010 uh, 10, 10 and 1020 mild steel. Um, we had to change a lot of things because we use uh, a different steel. We don't use chromoly. It's not available in our country. Um, so uh, you'll see that the airframe has got a lot of bracing in in order to make up for that. Um, but the aircraft is certified uh, in some countries. So we had to go through all the testing up to ultimate load. Um, and this thing is very strong, I can tell you that. Um, and you're telling me off camera, one of the advantages of, use, of not using chromoly, uh, but building up to uh, make up that is, is the bending of yeah. the metal versus uh, just cracking of the metal. That's, that's true. Um, so, I mean, obviously with uh, close to 700 aircraft flying, we, we always have accidents. I mean, people uh, do stupid things sometimes and accidents happen. And in all these years, we've never had a fatal accident uh, you know, structural wise, uh, you know, we've had two or three fatal accidents, which are uh, pilot error. Um, the same as with any other manufacturer, we, we always investigate these accidents very um, thoroughly with our civil aviation. And there's never been a structural failure um, in any of our models. And 
you know, the, one of the thing that really stands out is when somebody uh, crashes the aircraft, the the cockpit area is like a, a crash, what, what is the, a crumble zone, and it absorbs a lot of energy. So people walk out normally without even a scratch or a, or a bump. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the main advantage of this. And also it makes it uh, affordable, you know, and we can get the stuff. All right, so in, in closing here, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, where can people get in touch with you? Uh, where are you uh, located on social media so they can see some, some other videos that you've produced from either the factory, you flying, and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, for North America, um, you can contact Drake uh, Aircraft Adventures. Um, their website will be up and running now soon, uh, hopefully in this week. Uh, or you can contact the factory direct, kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Um, there you'll find a link, uh, WhatsApp link. You can WhatsApp me direct uh, from there. So I just want to tell the builders or the prospective builders that we are always accessible. So if you have a problem, you can WhatsApp either myself or the factory and we'll get back to you as soon as we wake up. <laughs> All right, so one of the big things right now in kit planes uh, and home builds is lead times. Everybody's busy. Everybody wants to build an airplane. If you talk to all the, the big name brands, they're usually between a year and two years out on getting a kit. If you were to order one today, you will wait that long, unfortunately, for a kit. Everybody's just wanting to build. You kind of have a unique number you're advertising here today on lead times. And what does that, what does that look like? Well, at the moment, as things stand now, we can, we can uh, ship from South Africa within three to four months. So you'll probably five to six months and you'll have the kit and you can start building. That's amazing. You think you can, you can hold to that for another six months? We've been able to do that the last eight years. So we just double production every now and then and then uh, we keep up. So our, our uh, motto is three months. Um, so I'm trying to keep to that. Uh, sometimes it goes to four months depending on supply, but uh, we've never gone over five months. So um, people can hold me to that. All right. Well, thanks for giving us a kind of a walk and talk tour through your booth and uh, welcome to the North American market. Thank you very much. And my offer stands to come and visit me in South Africa. I'll take you on a nice safari. I appreciate that. <laughs>